Hi, everyone. I'm Father Donald Calloway, and it's an honor to be able to be a participant and a speaker uh, for this event. Uh, and I have a interesting talk to give to you today, and it's called St. Joseph, Loving Helper of Jesus, Mary, and the Church, which of course means us. And so uh, let's say a prayer together uh, to St. Joseph so that this talk is pleasing to the Holy Trinity and fruitful for our souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to pour down your graces and mercies upon this talk and this time, that it would be anointed by you to be pleasing to you and beneficial for those who hear it. We ask this through the intercession of Our Lady and the great Saint Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, my friends, here we are. We find ourselves in the year of Saint Joseph. And what a year it's been. Um, I'm so excited and happy about this. Every day I wake up in the morning and I tell myself, today's day 60 of the year of St. Joseph, and I'm going to be doing that, you know, every day all the way up until the end, because I think the fruits are just going to be incredible for this year. And as many of you know, of course, because I know so many of you have been contacting me and telling me how you've been loving, you know, the book, Consecration to St. Joseph. So a lot of my talk today is going to be based off of some of the themes that are in the book, and I'm going to expand on them uh, in ways that are, that are not in the book because of the times that we're living in. You know, we're living in very, very challenging times, very difficult times. There's a lot going on. Pretty much uh, every day is filled with drama. You know, if you watch the news or you get something uh, updated on the Internet, you, you find something else and you're like, oh, boy, we really have to hunker down with some serious prayer here because of what's going on. And that's a big part of why I think that the Holy Trinity uh, has brought St. Joseph to uh, the world, to the church in a way right now that has never been done before because of so much that's going on. And in order to understand the greatness of St. Joseph and, and, and why we need him today, right? Why we need his loving help as a church today and as people in the church, members of the church, let's back up a little bit and see what he did for Jesus and Mary because it's quite extraordinary when you, when you take a look at it. So let's, let's approach it first from Jesus. So what did he do for Jesus as a loving helper? And of course, at, at, even more than that, as, as a loving father, as a dedicated father to the Messiah, to the savior of the world. I mean, no pressure, right? That's, that's a pretty intense role uh, and shoes to have to fill, but he did it and he did it well. He did it very well. So first, if you think about it, you know, sometimes you hear people say, well, Mary was an unwed woman when the angel came to her. Is that true? Actually, it's not true. Um, Mary was already espoused. She was already married, betrothed to St. Joseph. So this is, a, this is important because God waited for the marriage to take place between Mary and Joseph before he sent the angel to Our Lady to give her the Annunciation and to announce the coming of the Savior. So Joseph was important and needed from that very beginning. Now, a lot of people, you know, ha have thought that Mary was not married, but here, here's the reason that she, she was, and we know this to be a fact. In the time of our Lord, 2,000 years ago, in uh, Judaism, in the Jewish religion, there were two phases to the marriage. So the first was the betrothal, where they uh, took each other as husband and wife, and that was what established the marriage. So sometimes today people say, well, is that kind of like an engagement? No, it's not at all, because today when you say engagement, you're not married, right? You can, there's no marriage commitment there. You're just engaged, hopefully to be married, but you're not married yet. In the betrothal ceremony 2,000 years ago in, Ju in Judaism, that established the marriage. The second phase of the marriage is when you moved in together. And that could take time because the husband had to prepare a home for his wife. And that could take 
uh, quite a long period of time because he wanted to make a very nice living space for his beloved wife, which he was already married to. And so this is important because the context of salvation takes place within the marriage of the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph. And so God is showing us that he needed St. Joseph to be espoused to Our Lady before he would send his son into the world. And so that's a very important way that St. Joseph was a loving helper to Jesus and a loving father to Jesus. And then if you simply just go through the episodes in the life of the Holy Family, you can see all the incredible things that St. Joseph did for Jesus. One of the biggest and one of the most incredible is when he saved Jesus from Herod. Remember that? So here you have, you know, a, a madman basically who wants to kill babies because he's paranoid of losing his power because, you know, people have come from the East and said that a newborn king uh, is on the scene. And so he's paranoid. He doesn't want to lose his power and his position. And so he, he seeks to slaughter the innocents, right? That is just horrific to think about. But it was St. Joseph who was the loving helper and the loving father to Jesus, and upon receiving that message from an angel, took our Lord for safety away from this madman to Egypt for safekeeping. And you know, there's an extraordinary title that is given to Saint Joseph that no other saint has, not even Our Lady. And we know that Our Lady is greater than Saint Joseph, right? Of course, absolutely. But many saints, blesseds, and even a pope has called St. Joseph the savior of the savior. Wow. Now, that doesn't mean that St. Joseph is God or the Messiah or anything. Of course not. Absolutely not. His savior part would be with a small s, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, he truly did save Jesus from Herod. And that is incredible to think about because think about today. How many organizations, which are the Herods of our time, for example, Planned Parenthood and many others want to kill babies, babies in the womb who are developing, who are human persons. And this is, a, this is the Holocaust of, of, of our time. And so we need to go to St. Joseph today in an extraordinary way, know that he, knowing that he is the protector of children, infants in the womb. We need to bring him into the pro-life movement in a way that we've never done before. This is one of the main reasons, I think, that we have St. Joseph coming on the scene today when we have this tragedy of abortion taking place. Let's remember that it was Joseph who saved Jesus, and he's able, when we go to him, to help us in this situation, you know, as well. Now, some people might think, okay, Everything you said so far, Father, is good. No problem there. But Joseph didn't really have anything to do with Jesus's public ministry. Um, or, you know, he wasn't there at the cross. Uh, Our Lady was, and St. John the Evangelist, Mary Magdalene, but not St. Joseph. So really, he didn't have much to do there. Mm, yes and no. Yes and no. So he was not physically at the cross. This is true. He was not physically present in the public ministry of Jesus. Tradition says that he died sometime shortly before Jesus initiated his public ministry. But he was at the cross. Do you know where? In the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus and Mary brought St. Joseph to the cross because it was Joseph was Jesus' loving father, his foster father. And he was the loving, protecting husband of Mary. And so what was it in all those hidden years, we say, of the Holy Family that Joseph did? What did he do for Jesus and Mary? He strengthened them. He encouraged them. He prepared them for what they were going to have to go through. He wouldn't be there when it happened, but he is the reason as the head of the Holy Family, as the loving father and loving husband, that they were able to get there. It's because of his dedication, his sacrifice, 
that they were able to make their sacrifice on Calvary Hill. Yes, my friends, this is so important because think about our own lives, right? All of us on some level, on some level as followers of Christ are marching towards Calvary ourselves. We are going to be called to die to ourselves, lay down our life for the truth, for the truth. And especially in these challenging days, when there's a new persecution uh, coming, it's already here, but it's gonna get a lot stronger, I fear. And we may see times like we haven't seen in a long time when it comes to Christians hiding and trying to, you know, basically survive because they don't want to cooperate with an immoral system. And so we need to ask St. Joseph, we need to ask him to strengthen us, to, 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 to protect us. Because St. Joseph is not here with us physically right now, just like he was not physically present at the cross. But where is he? He's in our heart. And this is real. This is not just a sentiment, a poetic statement. He is with us in our heart. And we need to place ourselves in his heart, in his most chaste heart, because it is a heart that is so dedicated, so loving, that that heart, the most chaste heart of St. Joseph, took care of the sacred heart and the immaculate heart. And he wants to take care of our hearts too. Okay, so let's transition now and talk about how St. Joseph was the loving helper and the loving husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So again, we see, you know, at the marriage, right, uh, when they are espoused to each other, betrothed to each other, and they truly loved each other. Now, we know that in their marriage, there was never the conjugal act. It was a virginal marriage but it was a true marriage. All the saints testify to this because their hearts were one. The Immaculate Heart and the Most Chaste Heart of Joseph were one. And they loved each other with great devotion and affection. They were not robots, right? They were not robots. Uh, they truly loved each other. And I'm sure probably Mary sung beautiful songs and Joseph loved to listen to her sing. And probably he even affirmed her in her beauty when she wore that one particular dress that he loved. Oh, my lady. Remember, it was Joseph who first called her my lady. He loved her very much. And so for her, how did he help her? He affirmed her dignity. See, this is what all women want, is to, to be treasured, to be affirmed, because that's where a woman gets that sense of security, is when a man in her life, growing up, it's going to be her father, of course, but then when she is married, it will be her husband, who, who treats her with respect, and is a protector, and a defender, right? We call St. Joseph the guardian of virgins. It's one of his titles in the litany of St. Joseph. And he's the a guardian of the virgin, of course. He was her, her loving provider. He worked for her. He toiled for her. He was able to endure hardship and, 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 and even, even exile. You know, remember when they went to Egypt, this was not easy for St. Joseph. This, they did not prepare for this. In all likelihood, they didn't have much with them. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and then the angel announced, you need to flee, take the child and his mother to Egypt because Herod is seeking to, to kill the child. They didn't have much. They thought they were just going to be going back to Nazareth after this, you know, going down to uh, Bethlehem for the census. So they didn't have much. God provided with the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. Without those things, they probably would have been pretty much homeless and without anything at all. God provided and in Egypt, God provided. And God used Joseph to be that provider to take care of his wife, to shelter her, to, to take care of her needs, and also the needs of Jesus. He's such a good father. He's such a good, good man that Mary was secure in that, even though they were trying times. Matter of fact, I was just reading a book the other day, a fascinating book. It dealt with the the uh, Holy Family in their sojourn in Egypt. Now, a lot of it's speculation, the book that I was reading, but it did talk about how there was basically only one route that the Holy Family could have taken at that time to, to go from 
uh, Israel from the Holy Land to Egypt and the things that they would have seen, what they would have encountered, the cities that they would have gone to. And from historical studies, you can get a pretty good picture. And you know, it was difficult. There were, there, were, there were robbers on these roads. There were people with bad intentions on these roads. And even certain mystics in the Catholic tradition talk about this, like Venerable Mary of Agreda, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, talk about how they were surrounded on one occasion by robbers with bad intentions. Uh, and St. Joseph was there to, to protect them and defend them if need be, because this was his family. This was his family. And think about that today. When you think about how we have such a crisis in families and in marriages, so many men are not very present to their families. Many men are workaholics, traveling constantly away or just all over the place and not spending, it's a cliched term I know, but quality time with the family. Well, we need to look to St. Joseph. We need more men to be like St. Joseph, to be a loving husband to be that provider, protector, and defender, affirming the loveliness of his wife in front of his children, defending her, protecting her, and, and, and honoring her. So these are some of the things that St. Joseph, uh, in ways that he was a loving helper to Mary. One of the ways that really stands out for me, and I often meditate upon this one, is do you remember the event where they went to the temple for the presentation. And this uh, old man there, he, Simeon, he says to Mary, a sword is going to pierce your soul. And there will be, your son will be a cause of division. And Joseph heard that when he was there. He was present when that happened. And Simeon did not address Joseph. He addressed Our Lady because that was a sign that Joseph was not going to be present when that sword pierced her soul. That was gonna be on Calvary. And so what did Joseph seek to do? After hearing that, what would any good husband do for his wife, having heard a prophecy like that? He would seek to be a consoler of her heart, of her forthcoming trial and hardship and difficulty. St. Joseph knew he wasn't gonna be there when this happened. Therefore, he spent every moment being everything that he, exhausting himself for her, his beloved wife. And some saints and mystics have even said that the real cause of Joseph's death was he died from love. He poured himself out for Jesus and for Mary. What a good husband. What a good man. We need more of that today, my friends. And that's what I'm praying, that when people get the consecration to St. Joseph in men's groups, whether it's the Knights of Columbus or, or That Man Is You or this organization in this particular diocese, we need men to start being real men and to be what Joseph was for Jesus and for Mary. Okay, so now let's go into Joseph as a loving helper for us, the church. And we need his help today. Oh, do we need his help today? You know, a lot of people uh, forget, or maybe they never knew, that one of the messages, one of the aspects of Fatima that's really important is when St. Joseph appeared. Yep, he did. He was there at Fatima on October 13th, 1917, at the last apparition which is that apparition, of course, uh, that always gets the attention because it's the one where the, the sun was gyrating in the sky. And I, I think it was something like 70,000 people or something saw this and they thought the sun was gonna collide with the earth and the end of the world, you know? Well, it didn't, of course, but it was in that same apparition that all three children of the Fatima apparitions testified that they saw St. Joseph. They saw him holding the Christ child and together, Father and Son, Joseph and Jesus, blessed the world. Why is that important? Well, part of the Fatima apparition, the message of the Fatima apparitions is about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, right? Oh yes, and we're longing for that. We're crying out to heaven for the triumph of Our Lady's Heart because it ultimately means the reign of Christ the King, right? The kingdom of Christ. 
But is Our Lady's heart ever going to triumph if families are in disarray? If there's 52% of all marriages today ending in divorce? Our Lady is not delighting in that. She's not joyful in her heart. No. The only way that we're going to experience her, the triumph of her Immaculate Heart is when we get the family right. That's why we've got to bring in St. Joseph, big time. You know, Sister Lucia Dos Santos, the longest lived visionary of Fatima, lived to be like 100 years old, I think. She said on one occasion to a, to a cardinal, she said that the final battle between God and the devil is going to be fought over marriage and family. We're living that out today. You, you know this. It, it, there's crisis every. We've got modern families, people have redefined marriage, and we've got gender ideology and all kinds of craziness going on today, for sure. Well, did you know that even before Fatima happened in 1917, a pope, a very holy pope, blessed Pope Pius IX, he declared St. Joseph the patron of the universal church. Mm -hmm. And the word patron comes from Latin, which means pater, which means father. So St. Joseph is the father of the church. Wow, right? We've always known that Our Lady is the mother of the church, right? She on Calvary gave birth to the church. But remember, Calvary would not have been possible without St. Joseph getting Jesus and Mary there to be able to make that sacrifice so that we could be born. So St. Joseph is not only the father of Jesus, He's the father of the mystical body of all the brothers and sisters of Jesus, the church, you and me. That's extraordinary. Saint Joseph is our father. He's our spiritual father. We can call him as many saints have father Joseph, or even you could say affectionately dad. Really? That's what a gift we have. And now the church is, is bringing this to our attention more and more, and incredible things are happening. I mean, the year of St. Joseph is one of the greatest, and we're living in it right now. Oh, what saints of old would, have, would not have done to have experienced what we're experiencing. Oh, St. Teresa of Avila, she loved St. Joseph so much. What she would have done to live in this time. She's in heaven now, of course, with our Lord, but wow, she's rejoicing for us. St. Andre Bastet, oh, I bet you anything. He is, he is rooting for us now. He's praying for us right now. And he's, he's declaring like he did when he, when he was here on earth, go to Joseph, because he's going to help you in the difficulties. And there's a lot of difficulties. We know this. There is a lot of, there's a lot of people out of work because of the whole COVID stuff that's going on and the shutdown of everything and the lockdown. So many people have lost their jobs or been put on furlough or, you know, temporarily laid off, but there's a lot of anxiety. When will I get back to work full time? Or, or how am I going to pay the bills? And how am I going to take care of this? I, you know, my, my, my mortgage or, 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 or whatever it may be. I mean, I have this in my own family happening right now. It, no one is, is exempt from this. And on top of that, which are real concerns, and, and let's not forget that St. Joseph is the patron saint of workers, right? I mean, he's our go-to guy right now for all of these things that are really and truly happening to people in the world right now. But let's not forget too, that there is a lot of stuff going on with certain organizations, certain movements, certain people in leadership positions in the world, in politics especially, but in other areas too, that really are trying to go against many of the fundamental truths of Christianity, especially when it comes to human life and marriage. I mean, there is an all out assault right now taking place. And sadly, and I, I, I take no delight in saying this, I do get a strong sense that there is a, a, a very, very powerful persecution coming. Because unless you cooperate, a lot of people are, 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 are going to be cast aside and they're going to be told that you have to update, you have to participate with this particular program from the World Health Organization or whatever it may be. And those who are truly dedicated to Jesus Christ, if some of these things are going against our teachings and asking us to participate in immoral things, we're not going to do it. And we need to go to St. Joseph. We really do, because there are a ton of Herod's today at work. 
And they don't just want to kill babies. They want to do that for sure. It's just horrible. But they want to wipe out so much that has built civilization as we see it today. There's a lot of talk of this great reset. There's a lot of talk of, you know, build back better. Hmm. Well, all that would work if we did it according to God's plan, right? If, if we brought in the light and truth, which requires us to convert, to turn away from darkness and from death and from things that are not good for us. It requires us to, to change a lot of our habits, a lot of the things that we do, entertain ourselves with, a lot of the things that we are involved in. We have to change. The problem is a lot of people don't want to change. And so there's a battle going on and it's probably gonna get even more intense. So who's our go-to guy? Who is, if you're a child, who do you run to when somebody is threatening you? Your dad. Dad, protect me, defend me, right? Uh, I remember when I was a little kid, you know, we would always joke around, my daddy can beat up your daddy. <laughs> my friends, we have St. Joseph. We have the mighty terror of demons on our side. This man has paternal intercessory power with God. When Jesus hears St. Joseph make a request, Jesus hears it coming from the lips of his loving father. And Jesus hears it through the ears of his because he's a son. He's Joseph's son. And so it is a powerful thing. And so we need to take advantage of that. We need to run to St. Joseph right now because he, even in the midst of all that's going on, he's going to give us peace. He's going to give us joy in our hearts. You know, when today you could definitely be negative about just about everything, right? And if you watch too much TV, you're definitely going to be bummed out on a daily basis. But that's not what Christianity is about. And our, our future is not determined by what some news is saying. We, we are Christians. We are dedicated to Jesus Christ who has conquered the world, right? Be of good cheer, he says, for I have overcome the world. Yes, he has. This is true. And so we need to constantly remember that. And St. Joseph will help us to remember that. He's the one who, who is being shown to us right now to be our loving father, to give us peace, to give us joy, to take away our fears and our anxieties and all these things so that we're not completely freaking out. Because there's a lot of people completely freaking out today. And we need to maintain that spiritual peace in, in our hearts. And if our heart is united to the most chaste heart of St. Joseph, we're gonna be united to the sacred heart of Jesus. We're gonna be united to the immaculate heart of Mary. And we're gonna see extraordinary things. I'm seeing it. You know, when, when I published the book, oh, I could do a whole nother talk right now on the fruits so far of what I've seen from the people who have done this. Just incredible things, healings, overcoming of addictions, healing of marriages, vocations, even a lady in Houston uh, about three weeks ago told me that she uh, did the consecration, gave her life to St. Joseph, and she was suffering from a terminal uh, cancer, and it's gone. It's gone. It, the doctor said it's, it's as though you had never had it. So, oh, my friends, we need to go to St. Joseph right now. We really do, because he's your. he wants to be your loving helper. He wants to assist you, even though right? We're going to, we're all going to suffer. We're all going to at some point die in, in this life, but we can walk towards Calvary with confidence. We can trust in Jesus. We can have so much love in our hearts because we know where we're going. We want to go be in heaven with, with the Holy Trinity. We want to behold the face of Jesus we want to see the, oh, the lovely face of Our Lady and to behold Saint Joseph. So my friends, I'm going to be praying for you because we've still got quite a bit left in the year of Saint Joseph. And why don't you also, when you wake up in the morning, why don't you remind yourself, it's the year of Saint Joseph. What do I got to be worried about? Let me give everything to Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph, be with me and protect me. Watch me and guard over me, just like you did Jesus and Mary. So to end this talk, I'd like to uh, recite an act of consecration to St. Joseph. Um, and this one is found in my book. There's many in the book. 
But this is a lovely one. It's a daily act of consecration to St. Joseph. And you might want to do that yourself. You know, many people, when they wake up in the morning, they consecrate themselves to uh, our Lord and Our Lady, and they kind of set that intention for the day. You know, I give you my eyes, my ears, my heart, my soul, my whole being without reserve. Well, we can start doing that with St. Joseph as well. Uh, and, and, I, and I really think that we need to start doing that uh, because of the crazy times that we're living in. So I would invite you, um, if you have the book, it's on page 239. If you don't, no worries. Um, you can just um, follow along with my praying of it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O dearest Saint Joseph, I consecrate myself to your honor and give myself to you, that you may always be my Father, my protector, and my guide in the way of salvation. Obtain for me a greater purity of heart and fervent love of the interior life. After your example, May I do all my actions for the greater glory of God in union with the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. O blessed Saint Joseph, pray for me that I may share in the peace and joy of your holy death. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, go to Joseph. Thank <laughs> you.